Hi everyone. Okay, so I just did the No Way Out card. I uh, rebooked that. Uh, the problem I'm having now is <laughs> well, it's not a problem. Okay, I want to have every match here have a story behind it. Okay, and the main focus of this is to uh, get get some uh, at least some sort of story behind the, these matches. Okay, now the thing to remember about okay, uh, sorry, just a little distracted there for a second. Okay, the thing to remember about the WrestleMania 18 card. I think this is where it, it like it, it may have started earlier than this, but it de definitely was like here. Uh, that they tried to shove as many people on the card as possible. Now, I've got one less match than they did. Uh, now, I thought about putting on a battle royal or something, so maybe I did do that. Uh, I haven't put it on here. Cause it's just that um, I've had to leave some people off the card that I thought I should have put on there. Uh, I did want to put a, a full way tag team title match on there, but it just didn't work out that, like that because I did something else and I, I think it would work out a little bit better than what happened. Okay, kick off the show uh, with the Cruiserweight title match. Uh, simple story is that uh, Hurricane is back and he is finally, he's a little bit earlier in, in his development, he's not, he's, he's still the superhero, he's still, he's turned babyface here, really, he's not as crazy as he used to uh, be, <laughs> uh, he's not trying to choke slam anyone, uh, bigger than him anymore, he's decided to pursue the cruiserweight title, it's totally he knows he can win, <coughs> because his friend, Gregory Helms has worn that belt before, he says, uh, and he's run up against, he's gone through, he's won a number one contendership battle royal or something, and he's in the, he's main event, he's on the card at WrestleMania, and I think this is a good place to put it, uh, I think this would be a good way to debut the Cruiserweight title at WrestleMania, kick it off the show. Uh, these two, I think, would have pretty good chemistry, and they'd be pretty cool together. Uh, I know Billy Kidman was around at the time, but I think Gregory, I think Hurricane was a better way to go. So, Hurricane wins. Okay, then we have the European title match. You can, uh, thing is, I kind of started to do the feel bang thing with... Uh, DDP, and this would be his, like, essentially swan song at uh, pay-per-views for WWE. Uh, and I would have DDP go over here. Uh, and DDP was kind of dead. He knew he, he was probably didn't have much longer in the business anyway. Uh, so, yeah, uh, DDP goes over here, uh, and the story behind this would be, Christian simply wants a rematch, and he started, instead of him losing all the time, uh, uh, he's started a little bit of a winning streak, he's found his confidence again, he, he, uh, right after No Way Out, um, he got, they, maybe they got, uh, uh, maybe him and Lance got a, a few victories as tag team partners, and he's, got his confidence back. Christian wants to get the European title again because he knows he can he he wants to beat DDP. He feels he's an old man. He feels that that he's not the WCW champ, champion DDP anymore. And DDP's got to prove and wants to prove that he's still got what it takes. So it's it's probably one or two segments uh, essentially, but here's the thing. Christian is the former champion. DDP is the current champion. 
and Krita, and essentially that's what it is. Is uh, it's a rematch. It's on a big show, and I think both these guys did put on a good match, and it went over. Uh, then we go instead of a one-on-one -on -one match to kick off the show uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. I decided to put Fatal Four Way. Edge versus William Regal in the, and this would be billed also as Edge's last chance to get back his belt. Rob Van Dam and Goldust. Essentially, I'm combining the two last matches and one thing. Goldust uh, informs everyone that he is a former Intercontinental Champion, multi-time Intercontinental Champion. He said uh, he starts taunting both Edge and William Regal, and, and as well as Rob Van Dam. He gets his way into it. That's he, he, as far as the build-up goes. That's his build-up. Uh, Edge, Edge asks Ric Flair uh, for a rematch, and Ric Flair says yes. But she, this is your last chance. Edge, so that's something to put on up on the line. RVD has earned this match. Uh, essentially, uh, I think, um, but he's uh, essentially, yeah, by beating William Regal in a match, uh, and yeah, uh, that's what uh, that's what happened. So he's he's pinned him in a tag match. Uh, maybe it was uh, Goldust and William Regal against Edge and uh, Rob Van Dam. Pr uh, plausible. Uh, and that's how he got the, the title shot. Okay. Uh, Rob Van Dam goes over there. Uh, Edge is a little disappointed, but he, he'll go on to other things later on. Booker T and Test, the new tag team champions. Now, they've been running roughshod through the tag division. Uh, since winning the belts, they're they're beating anyone and it, everyone that I, I put in front of them. Uh, but they uh, have come across the Hardys. The Hardys are the new number one contenders, uh, and it's just uh, essentially that's the story. Is the SmackDown before this, the Hardys uh, boast about being the best tag team. Uh, the, in WWE in, in, at at the moment, they are multi-time tag team champions. They they've beaten the best tag teams out there. Booker T and Tess say, "Well, we we're former WCW tag team champions and former WWE tag team champions, just like you guys." Uh, and I th and if I'm wrong here, tell me what. The Hardys want the ones that beat these guys, but anyway, uh, and if that's true, they'll bring that up and everything. But here, here we go. Uh, and I, I would have Booker T and Test go over here because I, I want to build up both these guys. I think Test uh, ended up not having as much talent, and uh, but he he had definitely had the physique and everything for this. He had all the ingredients. It's just Certain things didn't work out for him. Booker T, proven commodity. And I think this is a better way than having him fight Edge over a shampoo deal in Japan. Okay? Pretty silly. Uh, then we go on to a match I'm pretty proud of putting together. And, and I think this is a better way to handle certain things. Um... Originally on the card, it was Maven versus Goldust for the hardcore title, and then every man and his dog interfered and ended up winning the belt that night. Uh, I wanted to bring some legitimacy back to the hardcore division, so immediately uh, we, we had pretty much forgotten about the hardcore 24-7 uh, rule. It is brought up sometime in between time that that belt, uh, rule has been suspended, uh, now it's just the booking of the matches and everything. And I know some people like that that 24-7 rule. I hate it. Uh, I don't like it any. Uh, like, I think it had its time and its place. But now, 
we need to move on and um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be merging belts yet or not but uh, I do have a uh, mind of where everything else goes but here we go Maven has held on to the championship miraculously by this point he's beaten certain people in this match but anyway we're going into this uh, and it is called the Hardcore Title Invitational. Essentially, the thing is, uh, you, you, you can go into this match if you so desire. Uh, there are certain spots uh, available, and here are the participants. Maven is the champion. He's defending against Raven, Tommy Dreamer, Hulk, Holly, Spike Dudley, St Stephen Richards, Al Snow, Just Incredible, and Perry Satin. Okay, the thing to remember in this match, though, is Raven, Perry Satin, and Stephen Richards are working together to beat up most of the other participants. Uh, but, uh, and that includes Maven. Maven is doing horribly in this match. He's, uh, he's essentially like Crash Holly. He's trying his hardest, but he's getting beaten the hell out of and it's actually Tommy Dreamer that comes out on top here and wins the hardcore title uh, for the first time. Okay, and yeah, that's the match. Uh, then we go on to something a little bit lighter. I'd give these guys a little bit more time. True Stratus, Jazz, and Lita. Uh, Lita was not at the side of the Hardys, and that's probably one of the main reasons they lost. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so leader again puts in an effort and seeing as this was in Toronto Trish Stratus goes over because uh, as it turned out Jazz was good, got injured anyway so uh, tr uh, I'm having Trish go over in her hometown uh, and she doesn't beat Jazz though she beats Lita so uh, that's how that goes down alright here's what's the thing is, uh, I needed some more space on the card. And I think this is a better way to handle the NWO storyline as opposed to what they did. Okay, they did a do a match that got a pretty good reaction. And it was essentially Austin and The Rock teaming up against the three members of the NWO at the time. Anyway. Here's what happens. Uh, Ric Flair challenges Hogan for a match, uh, and it's horrible. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, the Hogan goes over. What a shock! Uh, so Ric Flair. Uh, decides to book another match the following week, which is Austin and Rock versus The Outsiders as well. Uh, and The Outsiders, using some dirty tactics, managed to go over and beat up both Austin and Rock. All three of these guys want their revenge. Ric Flair announces that the NWO will be competing at, the, at WrestleMania in a six-man tag, They'll be taking on himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Rock. Now, I think this would give everybody little moments, and plus, as well, this would give Kevin Nash something to do. Essentially, uh, Scott Hall and the other three would be taking care of most of the action. Uh, Kevin Nash would probably spend most of the time outside the ring. He would do a little bit, because uh, 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 he was injured at the time, so he wouldn't be doing too much. Uh, but I think he could, he would at least do little things. He, um, and you could have him with his, his arm in a sling or something. But the important thing is, this is a good way to placate everyone because Ric Flair is the one that's going to be taking the fall here. And chances are it's Hogan that's going to be dropping the leg and one, two, three. Uh, and later on, you could do the Austin versus Hogan thing. But I think, yes, that definitely needs to happen at WrestleMania. 
but it's a good way to uh, do things. And plus, uh, you could do a thing where the NWO brawl with Rock and he's out uh, for the thing. And Austin's going to be going away anyway, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then we have Big Show versus Kurt Angle. Both guys kind of, it's very similar to what happened uh, with Benoit and Kurt, uh, and Kurt Angle the previous year. They had just decided that they wanted a match at WrestleMania, and these two essentially do that. Uh, so, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, essentially, that's what happens, yeah. Okay, then we got Undertaker versus Kane. Uh, just because I didn't want to see Kurt Angle, I don't think there was much going on between Kurt and Kane. I don't know why that match really happened. It's not. It, it, it's not that they, they those two didn't have a good match. It's just like there was no real story there. There, and I think there's a story here. Um, the thing about this is, uh, Taker would have been getting in Ric Flair's face, and Kane would be the one standing up for him, and they would, and that's what would happen. And we well, you know book the match. Uh, then it's the WWF title match: Chris Jericho versus Triple H. Uh, Triple H goes over. What? What did you, did you expect? A different result? I'm, I'm not going to suspend anything here. Uh, and plus, this will give us an interesting thing. Okay, Triple H goes over. Out comes the Outsiders and Hogan, as well as Vince McMahon. They got this little bag, uh, and they're like, uh, and everyone's like, "What? What the heck's going on?" Uh, and out of the bag, they pull a shirt. It says NWO on it. They hand it all. Uh, they hand it to Triple H. He looks at it. He looks back up at him. He puts on the shirt. <laughs> so you have the babyface win, but you immediately turn him heel. <laughs> so yeah, the champion is part of the NWO. And it's a good way to do things. And um, Hogan would have been getting a babyface reaction. And eventually, it's a good way to get Hogan out of the NWO as well. So, yeah. <laughs> and be like, well, yeah, remember he's in the family. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, the, and Jericho's like, what? And then you even have Steph and Triple H reunite. It was a whole, like, the whole thing was a swerve. Screw Jericho out of the and You could do the whole Mankind thing where he's like, what, uh, Jericho's like, what the heck? What the heck's going on? And then you beat up. And then you got a hot, hot new baby face. Jericho's turned baby face as well. So, see, a lot of this I'm just coming off uh, the top of my head. Uh, like, I'd plan the, the shirt and everything. But yeah, that's... So, immediately they got the belt in there grasp. So, what do you think about that, guys? I think that's a good way to end WrestleMania 18, the NWO Mania. Okay, so stay tuned. We'll have Backlash in a little while.